All right. Welcome back to another episode of the Casey Campbell podcast. Casey Campbell with you, of course, and we are pleased to be joined by the head baseball coach at the University of Miami of Ohio, uh, Mr. Dan Hayden. How's it going, man? It's good. Yeah, things are good here. We got uh, we're actually it's just Miami University, uh, but but it's things are things are good. We're uh, excited to be playing baseball and um, hopefully can get back on a field soon. We were just talking before, uh, you know, our, our series this weekend got canceled against Bowling Green. So in some uncharted water there, um, but but excited to be playing baseball uh, but soon. And obviously after the 2020 season, any baseball we get is uh, is much appreciated. Yeah. Okay. So for people that don't know, Bowling uh, Miami of Ohio, Miami will not be playing against Bowling Green uh, this weekend due to um, COVID nineteen issues within the Bowling Green baseball program. Just want to make that clear for people that are listening to this podcast. So, Thank you. Um, so just you know, kind of going into the, this season, what was it? What were you kind of looking at? What were you kind of going into? What was it? What did you did you think it was what you expected it to be? Well, there was this year was so much different than other years because of, of how unknown the COVID stuff would make things. You know, I, I got very nervous as we kind of watched the men's basketball season coming down the stretch, um, you know, leading into conference tournaments where you see some, uh, you know, even before conference tournaments where uh, games are getting dropped with some regularity. Um, you know, our, I know our program at Miami had a, 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 a pretty good stretch where they didn't get to play basketball. Um, and I, you know, that made me nervous, uh, heading into the season for sure is, is how, how much will this affect us being able to play? And then, uh, you know, we get off, we get off the, the start. There was some crazy scheduling changes that we had to do about a month before the season because of all this conference realignment, not realignment, but restructuring with, with how people were going to do their conference games um, based on testing and everything else. So we, the MAC was the same way. We changed our conference format and a bunch of other schools did too. So we were in a scramble mode about a month before a season to make sure we could get all of our games in. Um, but then once the season started up to, up to yesterday, it, it felt pretty normal. Uh, it felt like we were, we were rolling at a, at a good clip and hopefully we can get back to that pretty soon after this weekend. So talk about like, you know, I know you're playing non, I, you got to play some non-conference games as well uh, so far this year. I know other conferences have uh, most notably the big 10 is not doing that this year. Um, and I know that the Mac has a, you know, plays a lot of big 10 teams for non-conference schedules. What was that like, you know, finding non-conference opponents, knowing that one conference is not available this year? Yeah. So the stuff we do early in the season, I, I, I would say venture to guess this is true for almost the entire Mac is that a lot of the games we play against big 10 teams are midweek games that right. happen while right. we're already in conference play. Yeah. Um, so that, I don't think the big 10 not being an option was a, was a major impact, uh, because we are not playing midweek games. Uh, some Mac teams are playing a couple, but most Mac teams have eliminated almost all of their midweek games. Uh, if not all of their midweek games, um, like we, we played Kentucky in a midweek before conference started and that was our only midweek game of the year. Um, so I don't know that the big 10 necessarily had too huge an effect on us. Uh, but, but like I said earlier, some of the, just the, how every conference basically was trying to figure out how they were going to operate their conference schedule. It did have a domino effect on everybody's scheduling. So while I say we were in scramble mode about a month before the season to, to, to clean up our schedule and to make sure that we had games every weekend, it seemed like just about everybody else in the country was in the same boat. So it wasn't that hard to figure out who we needed to play and, and who we could play and make it work with. Uh, but it was just different. It was just different. So kind of going into this year, what was it, uh, just maybe talk about some of the guys who may not follow Miami baseball, some of the guys that are really kind of standing out for you this year. Sure. Yeah. I like our team a lot. Uh, we've got a, we've got a bunch of talented guys. I think coming into the year, um, you know, if you know, if, if you follow Midwest baseball a little bit, we've, we've been, we were projected to have a pretty good starting pitching rotation and uh, that's held true. Um, I like our starters a lot. Sam Bachman has has been um, a really successful pitcher in his tenure at Miami. He's in his third year now, uh, and he's really good. I mean, he's a he's a special player. There's no question. He's also a special teammate and a really really hard worker, and a bunch of other really cool things about him. Most people who know anything about our program or Sam know he throws 100 miles an hour and he's got a 91 mile an hour slider and he strikes out a lot of people. Um, so that's what the easy things to figure out about him are. 
Uh, but the more you peel the, the onion back, the more good stuff you find with Sam. So he's an easy one to talk about um, because, I, you know, he's just a really, really good human being, good kid, works his butt off. And, and I think he and some other guys really set the tone for our team and, and especially our pitching staff. Grant Hartwig's another guy that comes to mind. Uh, Grant's a weekend starter for us as well. He was, he was not that at the beginning of the year. He kind of worked his way into that role and has been really, really good for us. Jonathan Brand is uh, another weekend starter who has had uh, he's he's had a little bit more up and down this year than I think we thought he might, but his his last couple outings have been really really cool to watch. And he's another guy that throws real hard, really good breaking ball. He's you know ninety three ninety six with this big tough to hit breaking ball. And then Tyler Bosma is our fourth uh, starter right now, and it hasn't been uh, as as clean as we think. Um, it should be for Tyler yet, but man, the kid's process is awesome. He works his tail off. He's a super competitor and, uh, it it's, he's had some good outings. He's had some bad outings, but when it clicks, uh, this, this starting rotation is really good. And the bullpen has been, been really good as well. Yeah. So kind of going, you know, I know you got a, got a, got a week before the next really series begins, like what what what's your plan this weekend? Because the thing is, you know, with all this practice time and stuff, what are you kind of doing with the guys right now? So we've got uh, we've got some time before we get on a baseball field with another team again. Uh, part of that is because we're going to make every effort we can to make up the games against Bowling Green. So we we aren't in a position where we can reschedule games because we're only allowed to play fifty six games in a year. We're at that number right now with all of our conference games, kind of you know, projected to be played. So if we added games right now, we would, it would eliminate the ability to make those games up basically later. So we can't go get another opponent uh, right now. Um, but what we'll do is we, we've, we've got practice this afternoon. We'll get after it uh, with, with the guys that was going to happen regardless of, of what Bowling Green had for us. And then we'll just enter squad this weekend, uh, which will be really cool. I, our, I, our pitching staff will challenge our hitters as good as anybody else in the country can anyways, I think. So um, it'll be a good work, work week for us, uh, but we'll enter squad the next couple of days and, um, hopefully get, uh, some, also some added time for some time off, uh, so to let some guys rest. It has been a, it's been a different challenge this year with the schedule. Uh, like I said, we have no midweek games, so there's some, there's some breaths there, some deep breaths for our guys there, but the four games every weekend, it, it, it is, <laughs> You get to that game four on Sunday and there's some guys that are um, are limping, you know, limping through the, the that last game a little bit. So it'll be nice to get our, our bodies healed up and we'll take that as an advantage. And we'll, we'll say the, the good we can take out of this is we'll get some we'll get some extra time to heal uh, before Kent State comes to town a week from tomorrow. All right. All right, coach. Thank you so much for spending some time with us and uh, um, well, good luck in a few weeks. Yeah, thank you very much.